Hello everyone, my name is Melo Chivesakunda and I'm at the Sierra Resort for a special broadcast of the Financial Insights Show. And with me at this year's Impact Africa event is Dr. Samuel Maimbo. Dr. Samuel, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Great. It's a pleasure to join you today. Absolutely. You know, the pleasure is all ours. You know, when we saw the, the, the delegate list and we saw you as being one of the keynote speakers, we were very, very excited. But uh, are you able to just tell our viewers that might not know, because our, t our, our, our channel broadcasts on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. But maybe for Zambians who don't know who you are, please tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, a proud Zambian uh, who is currently working with the World Bank in Washington, D.C. as the Vice President for Budget, Strategic Planning and Performance Review. Uh, but I've been there, well, I've been there 20 years. I actually feel I grew up in Zambia. I worked for the Bank of Zambia for a while, Pricewaterhouse, wow, went to wow. school on the Copper Belts, okay. went to boarding school in Southern Province. Uh, so a son of the soil, I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. And it looks like you've had like a, 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 a wide feel of, uh, of Zambia being you know, on the Copper Belt and Southern Province itself. But let's, t let's turn our attention to this particular year's uh, Impact uh, Africa event. I know this is the second one that you've attended. I believe the first one you didn't have a chance to because due to COVID. But you are actually one of the keynote speakers at this event. Just tell us a little bit about what uh, you know what you talked about in your first presentation this morning. Look, I love events like this one. Any event that brings the private sector, the public sector, and financial institutions together, count me in. Absolutely. Part of the reason I'm here and one of the key messages I was delivering is that as much as we can count on development assistance to develop our country, ultimately it has to be the private sector. Uh, development aid is declining in many regions. It's also becoming much more competitive. And in that competitive space, how you brand yourself is important. So being, having an organization that's specifically looking at sustainable finance is fantastic. And a lot of the sessions I've attended actually speak to some of these core issues that Zambia has to grapple with if it's going to be competitive in the years ahead. Absolutely. And, you know, from this morning's uh, panel discussions, there were several uh, aspects that, uh, you know, were touched on. And, you know, credit to the organizers of this event, because they've brought together a plethora of, you know, like stakeholders who could actually uh, speak to the discourse of this particular event. But just tell us a bit about some of the key sessions that you enjoyed and what were your key takeaways out of those uh, particular key sessions? Well, ultimately, the top sessions for me are always the pitch sessions. It's amazing to see young entrepreneurs with fantastic ideas that are viable, that are seeking finance. So all of the pitch sessions, I attended all of them, I love them. What was also encouraging for me was actually some of the panels uh, that were led by venture capitalists. These are people who are experienced in structuring transactions, experienced in understanding the market. And as much as we often spend a lot of time and investment talking about foreign capital coming in, right. it's actually the domestic capital that is sustainable, that knows the market, knows the transactions. And importantly, for a lot of new businesses, it's not just the money, it's right. the advisory services. It's Absolutely. getting the right partners in the same room. And so that, the, those two sessions, when I put them together, I think leaves me quite optimistic about Zambia developing the type of ecosystem that's required for entrepreneurs, SMEs, to actually grow and support the economy. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's, it's quite interesting that obviously up until this is only day one and we'll have another a, a bunch of sessions that's going to happen tomorrow. What, do you, what, what are you hoping to see come out of this particular edition of the Africa Impact uh, Summit that's been held this year? I want deals done. I want to see a deal flow. Um, Zambia is in a unique position where there is a lot of public goodwill uh, towards the country, but you have to harvest that goodwill create deals, do transactions, create the jobs that are required to actually grow the economy. This is not just unique to Zambia. When we look at the rate of growth over the continent over the next five years, it's going to be quite tepid. Right. In 2023, growth is only going to be limited to about 3.2%. Uh, percent. That type of growth does not create the number of jobs this country needs. We've got a lot of talented young people. Absolutely. So if you ask me what I'm expecting to see, uh, to, uh, over the next course of uh, the next two days, I'd say two key things. Number one, deals. Number two, strong public policy support for SMEs and the private sector in the country. Long term, this is what will sustain this economy. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And we'll definitely keep on uh, you know, uh, looking into some of the key insights that come out of this event. And uh, on behalf of the team and I at Financial Insight, it's been such an honor to host you here. Uh, we are about to you know, start the cocktail. Hopefully you'll, you'll do, be doing a lot of networking I before you head back uh, to Washington. I'll be happy to, to, to do that. And thank you very much for the Financial Insights program. I'm a big fan. Oh, uh, I, oh. I, I've watched all your episodes. Wonderful. And, and the key thing for me is the financial literacy that comes with these programs. Uh, you are part of the ecosystem. You've Absolutely. got to have citizens who are aware of what's happening financially. So keep up the good work and thank you for your service as well. All right. Thank you so much. Right now, I'm joined by Mpaso Banda from Kukula Capital. Mpaso, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Great to be here. Glad to have you. So what are your thoughts of day one? Yeah, look, good day. Good opportunity to chat to a lot of SMEs that are doing interesting things in the impact space. Um, yeah, good to talk to a number of development finance institutions that are also here and investors like ourselves who are you know, keen to make an impact here in Zambia. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I'm sure there have been one or two pitches going on. Yeah. Are there any that have interested you or is there any particular sector that you've seen is having a lot of potential? Yep, a lot of focus on agriculture, uh, uh, energy as well. Um, you know, these are sort of priority sectors for Zambia. So, yeah, the quality of the pitches here and the companies represented has been quite high. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been good so far. Oh, we'll be seeing you for day two tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. be here for sure. Ah, okay, okay. And how was your session, by the way? I understand you had a session as well. Yep, just uh, looking at uh, alternative investments. Um, and, uh, yeah, just sort of a discussion on the alternative investment sector or asset classes here in Zambia um, and sort of the... Uh, comparing and contrasting those and, and yeah of course uh, the big one for us is private equity of course we're a fund manager so we're very passionate about private equity and the role that that has to play in channeling funding into sort of uh, green projects and, and businesses so so yeah okay uh, do you see a big opportunity for growth in terms of PE yep definitely room for growth um, so one of the things we talked about was regulation uh, there's a lot of enabling regulation for private equity. We've got new guidelines. I think there's a lot of interest from investors. Uh, investors are looking for green projects wherever they can find them. And uh, yeah, Zambia is Zambia's a good, uh, good place to find green investments. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear from you. I'm looking forward to seeing you on day two. Right, thank you. All right, thank you. This has been uh, Cedric Chuma for Financial Insights Zambia. Get to know. Right now, I'm joined by Sheila, who is Country Director for Solidaridad. Sheila, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks and yourself, Cedric. I'm good, I'm good. Glad to have you here. So, you. Uh, what do you think of day one? How has it been so far? I think day one, we've been off to a great and exciting start. Um, as usual, day one, no one knows who's who, who's doing what. And uh, with the different panel discussions and presentations that we're given, I think all the key players in the sector have been able to identify funders, businesses, um, enablers, and, and uh, other players alike. Yeah, so it's been a day one. You actually also had a session in the morning mm -hmm. about sustainable financing for MSMEs. Mm -hmm. What do you think, what are your thoughts on that as well? Uh, my thoughts on that is, look, as much as there's a lot of conversation around sustainable finance and how to get SMEs uh, sustainably financed and sustainable growth for SMEs, there's still a lot to be done um, in terms of the policy framework uh, surrounding that. Uh, we have the central bank who graciously you know, gave us more details around what they are doing as a central bank um, to, to make it a more enabling policy environment in terms of access to finance for SMEs. Uh, but I still find there's a disconnect uh, between the regulated institutions, i.e. the financial service providers, and them channeling those funds through to the SMEs. Um, they still see SMEs as very high-risk business, uh, particularly in agriculture, which is what Solidarity deals in. So as a result of that, um, where the central bank thinks, okay, this, this problem is being sorted, um, the SMEs are still sitting at the bottom of the chain, still waiting because it's, it's not flowing through to them yet. So I think that disconnect just needs to be um, figured and uh, a, a bridge to be gapped. Yeah, you've mentioned that Solidaridad is involved in agriculture. So with regards to that gap that needs to be bridged, 
what do you do and what are you doing to bridge that gap? What are some of the key initiatives you feel would be supportive of your efforts? Okay, so as Solidaridad, we work in the agricultural value chain to create a sustainable value chain. So we start right at the producer, which is the farmer, and then we go all the way up to policy enable and market uptake because those are the items that would create a supportive uh, business system, as we call it. Um, so looking at those pillars, I think uh, in the supportive business ecosystem space, I've already spoken about policy, there's a need as well for, for larger corporates to be able to take SMEs under their wings. Um, and this is not just in terms of capacity building and training, I think there's a lot of that kind of item and interventions going on in the SME space, uh, but to actually be able to, to source items from them, you know, market uptake is a big problem for SMEs. Um, and as such, you know, SMEs then tend to be buying and selling to one another, which is great and fantastic. Uh, but the larger market can only be tapped into by the larger corporates also tapping into the SME businesses and connecting them to other, you know, similar markets within Zambia and globally. So I think that's a, a, an important intervention to, to look at. Oh, that is very important indeed. So we'll be seeing you for day two. Day two, unfortunately not, but Solidaridad is here. I think you've seen the stand inside and yeah. uh, we will also be participating in the different dialogues that will be happening at day two. So I've got no doubt it will be as, as exciting as day one and I am sad to be missing it, but I'll stay in touch. Okay, okay. Glad to have you. Thank you so much for Thank being part of this. Thank you so much, Cedric. Thank you. This has been Cedric Schumer for Financial Inside Zambia. Get to know. Right now, I'm joined by Chango, who serves as CFO for Good Nature Agro. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. And uh, thank you for taking the opportunity to interview me. And hello to the viewers. Yeah, glad to have you. Glad to have you. So, we'd like to hear, what is your experience from day one? You know, day one has been extremely amazing. Um, you know, I live and breathe for these things. I love investments. I love prospecting for funds, linking, you know, like money to need and need to impact. So today has, you know, has truly lived, lived up to my expectations. My expectations were to meet people, to network, to hear great pitches from, you know, like hungry businesses looking for equity, looking for debt, uh, or, or, or mezzanine financing. Um, you know, like the, the, the sub sessions have equally been, you know, like uh, great in that, um, you know, just the, the, the layer of expertise and uh, you know the the depth of the conversations and content has just been you know like super rich so i've definitely taken a lot of notes enjoying day one and um, yeah looking forward to day two yeah i think uh from your talk we can tell that you're a finance guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and heavy on the conversation was access to financing for msmes absolutely what, what are your thoughts on that listen um there's a huge challenge and um you know like we have to you know like solution for uh, you know, like for SMEs as well as SMEs. You know, like uh, we operate in a tough, you know, like environment. Uh, there's a huge financing gap, literally across all industries on the continent. So it really makes things tough, you know, like when all the sources of financing or funding is coming from the commercial banks. Because there's different layers of businesses, you know, like from MSMEs to corporates. And, you know, banks are really into responsible lending, you know what I mean? And there are some constraints, statutory, you know, like Bank of Zambia. And there's some areas where they won't take risks without money belongs to other people. Yeah. And yet you also have different types of funders, you know, like either international DFIs, impact investors, you know, that are, uh, you know, like um, first loss investors. The, you know, investors are willing to take more risks, you know, either, you know, from, a, from an angel startup perspective with no financials to, you know, like having everything in check. But um, to answer your question more specifically, uh, my thoughts are the Zambia is growing. There's been at least more exposure to the different layers and types of financing. And it's just going to take us as, as a private sector and the government to be intentional about our policies, to be intentional about our communication and eliminate barriers you know, that prevent you know, SMSs to thrive and SMSs to access fun, fun, funding and financing. Oh, I think um, you're one of the success stories actually as Good Nature Agro. And congratulations on raising Series B, $8 million. 
that's uh, eight point five. Eight point five. Wow, eight point five yeah. million. Yeah. So that's actually quite quite huge and quite an encouraging for the MSMEs and SMEs that are here. Yeah. So in your word, what has helped you reach the criteria to be investment worthy? Hmm. Now listen, it's been a long journey. First of all. You know, like we have to recognize that Good Nature has been in business for the last nine years. Within the nine years, we have had the privilege to have incredible, you know, like investors, right? Uh, either investors that have invested in working capital from the debt perspective um, and investors that have also put in equity. So from the direction from the board, either, you know, from um, direction from the board and, you know, like conversations around growing the business and being investor ready, the incubator programs that we've been through, the conversations with the banks on how to, you know, be, you know, like how to be ready for local financing, which is more collateralized, uh, you know, collateralized financing or based. Um, you know, we've really, you know, like taken lessons from all the necessary stakeholders, right? And positioned ourselves to be, you know, like uh, in a place where we can, you know, like uh, produce, you know, like clean financials, audited financials. You know, we, we're in a place where we have pitch decks ready. We have got a data room ready. You know, like just all manner of information is really at the tips of our uh, of our fingertips, right? <laughs> because of the many engagements we've had in the due diligences that we've had with different stakeholders. But I can tell you that, you know, like um, investors out there looking for not only profitability but also impact and sometimes you know like the profitability might not happen due to exogenous factors you know like the rate itself you know in an unstable environment like the zambian economy sometimes you know can really add to you know like foreign exchange losses that just affect your financials however you know um the the, the impact and how it's changing people's lives makes a huge huge difference so um yeah just position yourself well listen to the guidance um, of you know the stakeholders and be investor ready all the time. No, oh, that's amazing, and yeah. I think uh, the Good Nature Agro story is a story of impact. You oh know, yeah, because you focus on bottom of the pyramid farmers as well. And to that end, I think you'll be having a session tomorrow. So maybe you can tell us about your session tomorrow as well. What to look out for without giving out too much, of course. Yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah, um, it's always a privilege to you know to talk about Good Nature Agro, talk about what we're doing, and what we're investing in. You know. And uh, tomorrow, I'll be a part of two sessions in day two. Um, in my first session, um, I'll be part of a digital, you know, like conversation. As you know, or you may not know, Good Nature Agro is investing pretty heavily in a digital platform, which is really meant to, you know, like connect the different players in the agri value chain. Because um, for the most part, there's been so many Franken Frankenstein systems and approaches on reaching out to smallholder farmers. But imagine just having a platform where all the products and service providers could just link into it to the benefit of the smallholder farmer, right? So that's really human-centered design thinking on creating a solution you know, for those farmers. So that's going to be the first part of the conversation. And then the next uh, piece is I'll be teaching a master class, uh, a master class uh, which is in the finance space of uh, what to do when cash flow is tight. I think a lot of businesses do struggle, you know, like uh, with financing, and uh, a lot of businesses do go through tight and very lean times. So the whole point of my master class is to talk about it, you know, like uh, through real life experiences or real life examples, you know, to let people know, one, they're not alone. Um, and two, there is a way to still come out of it with your head high, you know, without destroying, you know, like relationships and, you know, like really having, you know, like true deep levels of visibility and confidence to, you know, different uh, people. Uh, whether suppliers or people that you owe, uh, funders and the like. So it's, it's it's going to be a fun class. Let's let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about, yeah. you know, let's talk about the good times. Let's talk about the bad times and everything in between. Uh, most important, let's talk about money. <laughs> yes, my yeah, favorite topic. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm very very much excited for tomorrow's session. Uh, thank you so much for yes. us. Looking forward to seeing. No, you. thank you for having me. This yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> this has been uh, Cedric Chuma for Financial Insight Zambia. Get to know. Greetings, my name is Cedric Chuma. I am here at Sierra Resort, which is the venue for this year's Zambia Annual Impact Investment Summit. And right now, I'm joined by Luke from Kizazi Capital. Luke, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me today. Glad to have you. So, yeah. how's been day one and day two? Yeah, it's been amazing. Value added, uh, the networking. Um, I think 
the most impactful thing for me uh, is simply being able to be in a space where um, you can see the synergy, you can see the excitement, you can you can you can just get the feel that uh, it's not just in country, but even uh, internationally, there's a growing awareness and understanding that uh, not just in Africa, but especially in Zambia, uh, this is a great investment opportunity, and there's a lot of real viable investments um, that that people are are building, growing, and and uh, just excited to be a part of all that. So. Oh, that's amazing. So you've, you've been here for day one and day two? Day one and day two. What has stood out for you? Which session did you really like? Yeah, you know, I think, um, I think just for me, obviously in the business that we're in, hearing the different pitches and, uh, and basically just hearing what's out there, um, getting to identify uh, which different sectors are really bringing forth investment opportunities. Um, we tend to be a bit more tech focused. And so uh, hearing about the agricultural, um, manufacturing, uh, telecommunications, it's been really interesting just to see that within every sector of investment there are, are not just opportunities but viable opportunities that really have potential to bring a lot of change and a lot of benefit to, uh, to the Zambian landscape. Oh, that's amazing. So you're here as Kizazi Capital. Yes. Maybe you'd like to tell us a little bit more about Kizazi Capital. Sure. Kizazi Capital right now, um, we're just basically in an R&D phase. Uh, we are a mediary between a Western private equity VC fund that's looking to come in and uh, obviously invest in Zambian um, you know, startups. Uh, we, we're looking to kind of bring a different and a fresher approach to the traditional uh, incubator, um, accelerator, you know, tech uh, hub uh, model uh, through partnership um, and also then through you know, um, business expertise and coaching, mentoring with a team of people um, from the States and from India and different places around the world that have experience uh, and also as a partner want to see not just the acquisition, but also the, the scalability and then a, then a healthy exit of, of uh, Zambia startup opportunities. Uh, so, oh, that's amazing. So, what do you have to say about opportunities here? Yeah, guys, I, I mean, I, I don't, I, it's all been said. I, this, is, this is where I think opportunities for investment uh, over the next decade and a half are going to be most. I mean, we're sitting on a continent that has uh, the, the, one of the fastest growing populations. I think Zambia has the sixth fastest growing population. So, when you talk about employable uh, individuals, youth that are coming up, um, I really feel like uh, Africa and Zambia specifically have a huge narrative to write and to lead in and really developing and, and directing kind of where a lot of global development is going to go. I'm excited. You know, I've, I've been here for about 17 years. Um, I love Zambia and I really am hoping that, that development here is done by Zambians for Zambians. That's really a big part of our heart at Kazazi is um, development needs to be done in, in a Zambian appropriate and, and respectful and honoring way. Uh, to the culture, to the landscape here, just to the, you know the social economical norms, and that's kind of um, I think what we're trying to do in bridging, bringing Western investors, trying to help to 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 shape their understanding of what needs to be done. As we know, we can't just transpose a Western model for startups onto an African situation and think it's going to you know. But trying to kind of just build those those uh, networks of of wanting to learn, but also partner to to really see the, the Zambian startup landscape uh, really thrive. So. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the Financial Insight Show. Thank you so much. And for uh, thank, you for having, thank you for actually being here and speaking so highly of our country. Yeah, I love it. Like, uh, I think we look forward to seeing you next year, yeah, hopefully, with sure. more deals. I'm yeah. sure you've seen some opportunities here. I hope to come with a, a whole portfolio ready to be, uh, to be filled. All right, right. Uh, this has been Sadiq Chuma for Financial Insight Zambia. Get to know. Right now, I'm joined by Bezo Nondwe from Inside Capital. Bezo, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And how are you? I'm good, I'm good. So we've just concluded the summit today. What have been your key takeaways? What have you enjoyed from the two days? Um, both days have been remarkable, in my view, and I've attended the summits over the last three years, and I've seen the evolution of them. I think when we first started, the quality of the entrepreneurs was not as good. I think it even included NGOs. And what I've seen over the years is the quality of entrepreneurs improved. So this particular session, I think, is probably the best basket of entrepreneurs that I've seen so far. Uh, but also the organization. The organization has literally taken up four or five notches, much better quality substance. We've got participation from the banking sector, a lot of participation from financial services. And maybe one big flag just to show how well this was. Last year, you know, from Jeffrey's comments in there, last year there were 12 SMEs that presented themselves at this. Those SMEs, nine of them, went to raise 44 million US dollars. That is remarkable and it's a start. So I think it's, it's definitely um, a tick in our box. Oh, that's amazing. You also had a panel discussion as well, uh, opportunities for investment in Zambia. Um, 
as inside capital, what does what is the opportunity landscape looking like? What do you have to say on that? The opportunity question, I think, from our panel discussion covered a number of areas. It started by looking at is there talent in Zambia? Do we have entrepreneurs and SMEs or businesses that you could actually invest in? And I think one of the panelists covered that adequately. There is talent. Uh, it's not that. That's a deficit. Then uh, there's a whole discussion around what about the sectors? What sectors can one SME get involved in? And again, it's another area if you look at Zambia because it's a developing country. Every sector you look at is not saturated. There's nothing that is saturated. It's not education. It's not tech. There's nothing that's like, not even the banking sector. You can say we've got a lot of banks, but if they're not covering the underbank, then it's not saturated. So there's opportunities in virtually every single sector by virtue of the fact that we're still a, a developing nation. So with that said, in my mind, we should ask ourselves, what is the challenge? You know, you've got the skill, you've got the sectors that you can invest in. And in my mind, I think the big gap, what's missing, is the ability to be able to raise and mobilize capital for entrepreneurs with good ideas, sustainable ideas, to be able to support them at an early stage. And especially with patient capital, you know, risk capital that will help them be able to grow. Because the gestation period for a startup, as you know, is anything between three, five years before it gets to steady state. So we need to be able to provide capital that allows them to get to that steady state and growth so that we can actually thrive and benefit from it. So there's a lot of that conversation that's been going on. I mean, there was a lot of comments in the, in the session there, I think, by the guest speaker about Zambia's got potential. I don't dispute that. But, you know, the potential has to be harnessed. To harness that potential, we need to be able to invest in the SMEs. And it cannot be straight debt. I mean, maybe just to summarize that, right? In my experience, you find that a lot of our entrepreneurs and businesses, if you look at their balance sheet the first year that they, they, they operate, you find that they've got 15,000 kwacha as their capital in the balance sheet. And yet they want to go and raise a million dollars, three million dollars on a very weak balance sheet. So already it's too much debt and not enough equity. So my, my pitch, and I don't know how we're going to get to do it, but perhaps through the National Advisory Board, you know, collaborating with all the partners, we need to raise venture capital for the early stage businesses that we can provide seed capital for them. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, in your particular field, venture capital and private equity, a key concern is exits. You, in your panel discussion, you mentioned a very lucrative exit that you had for a particular investment that you made. Um, what do you have to say about the ecosystem for exits, both for Zambian businesses and um, in the region? It's true. I mean, it's not just Zambia. Africa has been perceived in a number of cases that the exits are difficult. Uh, and again, maybe there's two things I could say about that. One, the PE model, a venture capital model, we borrowed a framework out of the Western world where you invest in the first five years, you divest in the next five years. So a business is expected to mature within five years. Maybe for Africa, it might take a little longer, and that's something we all need to take into cognition. Maybe it needs to take a little longer. But my personal experience has been that if you plan early at the outset, as you get into the business, you look at the possibilities of where your exits are likely to come from, you will find that you will end up picking businesses that have got the potential to either grow regionally or become the largest player in their market. And if you become big enough, exits become almost easy because anybody that's coming into the market in whatever space you're in is interested in getting a business that's already in play and is dominant. And you find that way that exits are, are possible. My partners and I have got a lot of experience in exiting businesses here in Zambia. We've exited quite a few businesses from the old venture capital fund. We've exited businesses in the second fund that was called Aureus Capital. So we've achieved the exits before in this same market that everybody says is difficult. And I would argue that um, it was even harder then than now, especially given the, the dynamics and how many players are in the market. Now we've got impact in discussion. We've got a lot of secondary possibilities to be able to offload assets from one PE firm to another. So yes, it's difficult, but it is not impossible. Oh, I think uh, that was very, very insightful. And it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for the being here. pleasure is mine. Uh, this has been Sadiq Chuma for Financial Insight Zambia. Get to know. Right now, I'm joined by Jade Bacton from Goodwill Investments in South Africa. Jade, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm glad to be here, back again in Zambia. So good, feeling good. Yeah, you've been attending uh, the past three conferences, yeah? Yeah, I've, this is my second time. Well, I was supposed to attend in 2019, but then things got a bit difficult. But yeah, glad yeah. to be here. Okay, so day two, now come to the conference. What's been your takeaway? 
I, I've really enjoyed the conference. It's been so well organized, well attended, and I think it's been a great opportunity to connect with different players within the system, especially different financial institutions. Um, and so I think we've been a able to have uh, collaborative conversations about how we can collaborate for the future, and especially around investment in Zambia. So it's been energizing, to say the least. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. You also had a panel as well. Indeed, I How did it go? What did you talk about? So our panel was about what the status quo of investment is in, on the continent for 2023. Um, I was joined by well-informed uh, experts from Infraco and Hivos Impact Investments. Um, and I think it was really nice to sort of outline and describe the trends that we're sort of experiencing around the economic slowdown and what the impact that slowdown has had, the global slowdown has had on the investment landscape and then taking it specifically to Zambia. Um, so I really enjoyed it. It was great. It's amazing. And uh, as good investments, have you seen some opportunities here? What do you have to say about some of the SMEs that you've seen pitch? Yes, I think having attended the conference last year and also having attended it this year, I think what's been really insightful is that the Zambian ecosystem has started maturing. There's a lot more. So we are an impact investor early stage. So there's a lot more opportunities that have become investable for us. Uh, we focused on agriculture as well, and so seeing a lot of agriculture startups pitch has been energizing and a nice uh, opportunity for us to build connections and see where the conversations take us. Oh, that's amazing. So, has Guru Investments seen a lot of opportunities among the SMEs? Yeah, I think specifically around the agriculture space in Zambia. I think for us, our focus with Zambia for the moment, or at least for the short term, is to find investable agri-tech, agricultural opportunities that is focused around food security. Um, and I think one of the startups that pitched, was it today or yesterday, I'm not exactly sure, was Harvest and then also Legacy Foods. Those were the two that sort of stood out for me. The one is around processing and then the one is around urban farming. Um, and so that almost fits our investment agricultural thesis to the T. Um, so I've really been enjoying being able to connect with those guys. Oh, thank you so much. Ah, thank you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure having you. This has been Cedric Chuma for Financial Insights Zambia. Get to know.